are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. Everybody, this is Off Planet Radio Live. I'm Randy Moggins. It is Sunday, 11 11 2018, and uh, it's a hundred years since the war that ends all wars reached an armistice. It's kind of ironic that the, uh, the power elites chose 11 11 as, as uh, Veterans Day. They always encode their intentions in the numbers and the symbols around us. And um, I think to paraphrase the great old quote by a sage, if his history teaches us anything, it's taught us nothing at all. And hopefully that's not true anymore. The race towards extinction by humanity in this, in this last century and in the century we're in now has been an astronomical toll on the psyche of human beings throughout centuries. It repeats and recurses constantly into our into our psyche collectively, and we we need to end this. So wherever you are today, we uh, we wish you the uh, the best, and we hope that those who have gone before us, um, their efforts are finally rewarded by genuine peace on planet Earth. So it is 11, 11, 11, do the geometry on that, and you'll find out that the 2, the 1, and the 8 gives us the triple 11. And we didn't think about that when we planned this show, um, but it's not lost on me that apparently um, destiny or fate or something tapped us on the shoulder and told us to converge. And to that end today, we've kind of named this show Deep Sixing the Deep State because that's really what this is about. It's about a consciousness rising and the efforts to muster those among us who sense the awakening and truly want to end the stranglehold on humanity, which has been a stranglehold on our collective consciousness for many, many, many thousands of years, probably hundreds of thousands of years. And with me today is Thomas Williams from Truth, Honor, and Integrity. We're kind of old friends who have hung out together. And we also have on the line with us Kim, who is with the uh, Mana World Holding Trust. And we're going to discuss um, the efforts that have been brought forth in terms of, again, kind of a, a reclamation project for America and for the world, because this is a global project. And so uh, that's where we're going to go today. We're going to discuss the um, the efforts that are being made by by people of good intention and um thomas we welcome you to the show hi it's good to be on and uh, hopefully we have a good show for that and everyone will uh, get a lot out of it i hope so and we also have kim and she's she's known as kim possible she is um the trustee of the man of world holding trust and kim welcome to off planet radio Thank you for having me, Randy. So as we go forward today, a lot of uh, hopefully we're going to also bring out some new information. Um, the historical background of what you brought forth, both you and Thomas Kim, goes back, um, I guess, a number of years. And what we're given to understand was um, an effort made to um, hold on. Uh, Sorry, my phone's ringing. Hello? 
How embarrassing. I can't find my phone. There we go. Okay. Okay. It's live. It's live radio, folks. We're not, yeah. and, and it's been a long time since I've done live radio. I just looked and realized it's been like three years since I used Spreaker. I had to upgrade my account and everything. So, um, yep, that's live radio for you. Phones ring, dogs bark, garbage pails fall over, and the windows crash in. So going <laughs> going forward, um, I kind of want to reference back to. Um, the update that you did, Thomas, on June 24th and 2000, it's 2018, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, some of the points that were brought forth, maybe what we can do first rather than spin into this is that you and Kim, however you want to do this, can give us the background of the Man of World Holding Trust and what that exactly constitutes, and that'll give us a place to kind of diverge then. Yes, I think it can be better with that, where the trust all started, how long it's been going, etc. Kim? Okay. Um, I'll just come give you kind of a brief overview, I guess. Um, the, the, the assets contained within the trust uh, started to be compiled thousands of years ago. So this isn't something that's new. Um, it's very old. Uh, the... You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, there's only been so many metric tons of gold mined uh, in the world, and, and they didn't really start calculating that until the 60s. That being said, um, you know, we have thousands and thousands of years of human history. Uh, so where did the assets come from? The answer is everywhere. Uh, there isn't a country on Earth uh, that did not contribute assets, whether it's in-ground assets, above-ground assets, uh gold, platinum, diamonds, iridium, opals, um, or any other uh, types of precious metals uh, into the trust. The, um, it was always run by three people at the top, and then you went on into the parents, as some of your listeners probably know. And then after the parents, it's the, underneath the parents, it's the coven. Underneath the covens is the, uh, you have the coven leaders, and then you have each coven uh, party has maybe one or two members that are at the top. And then after that, uh, then you start talking about your Illuminati, your order, your dragon families, you know, however you reference them. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> they, were, they were designed to compile assets into the trust, and then they were given uh, eventually fiat currency or worthless papers um, in exchange for contributing assets into the trust. Uh, the party that sat in the position before me that I'm at, uh, which is where the three were at the top, now it's just me, the, uh, they were intending on collecting all the metals for trade. Um, not necessarily trade amongst people, but for their type of trade and other yeah. technologies that they needed these metals for, let's just say. So they gave the... Uh, he developed, or he didn't actually develop, the person before me, the groups the two groups that developed the quantum system uh, one group contributed the technology based on the fact that they were going to split the foils of the foils of the war I guess you would say um, with uh, amongst the groups the system is not new it is old it is very very old it is new to people but it is old it has existed for a very long period of time and it exists in other places, not just here. Um, the system does a very good job of mapping virtually all the resources and then compiling all of the resources. So the reason why the dragon families were formulated is for uh, they were collection agencies, I guess you would say, or head slaves or slave masters. So they got power, they got control over people, but in actuality, they were just collectors. You know, there, there really is something mm -hmm. to the story um, that's told about the seven deadly sins where most yeah. people will pick one, and, yeah. and that's their button. Mm -hmm. and, and for these people, it was obviously it was power and, and greed, and it, and it worked for oh, in, in excess of a thousand years, this loop. Yeah. And, and he, yeah. So... Once I figured out how to use the system, uh, 
I guess I took my position on the 12th of September. Uh, my predecessor had given them a five-year extension to do the right thing, to do the disbursements. Uh, this is your Dragon family. To do the disbursements to all the people, they refused. And that, that option was up on the end of 2017. So... I started learning to work the system in 2015, the end of 2015, and I sorted through all of the assets. I moved everything around. I did try negotiating with uh, the Dragon families, the Rothschilds, and all of these people. Um, not so many nice words back. <laughs> Didn't really care. Um, you know, they said I was disrupting their way of life, and there's been many other comments since then. Um, so that's kind of how the trust came to be. Uh, the assets are still here, still in the trust, um, and, and they are ready to be dispersed back to the people. So that's, I guess, a brief yeah. history on the trust. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I chip go, in? Go, go, might help, go ahead, uh, Thomas. To, to sure. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, um, I do have the chat up and people are saying the volume is low. I've pushed every volume control on this console and on my computer listeners so that we're trying to get maximum volume out. But I understand the guest side seems to be a little low. So, guys, just do whatever you can to project. Yeah. I know it's uh, difficult. Uh, ho hopefully, uh, it, it's it's the problem with the desktop uh, speaker. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um the the other thing I feel needs to be mentioned is um, because people are saying, well, how, how can the trust own all all these assets, and and why can the trust declare sovereignty, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? What was happening in the past, and Kim can uh, say more on this, is all the the collection of the assets, and they were just giving bits of paper out, and but. All the collection of the assets was being leveraged time and time again, and they were not paying the dues back to the trust, which, which they're supposed to do. And um, and so subsequently, all the assets, assets, whether it's in-ground resources, whether it's the whole of Washington, D.C., the whole of the Crown of England, all became assets of the trust, which they thought they were always going to control. It's not the case now, and those assets are, have liens on them because they haven't paid their dues, the interest payments on them. And so subsequently, those assets become property of the trust, which is what Kim's now striving to get back to the people. So there's, there's that element as well. Okay. Kim, I need to ask you this, because it's been asked before. How is it that you came into a position where you were in contact with the trust and came into the position that you're at now? Well, there's been many stories told to me, and I'll only discuss the things that I actually know to be a fact. How's that? Um, Project Looking Glass, uh, you know, they had access to Project Looking Glass until mm -hmm. 2012. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what Project Looking Glass is, I know you do, and, and so does Thomas, but Project Looking Glass was, a, they used a specific element to look into the future. So in the future, it gave possible outcomes of, of their order of the world, of world events, all of these types of things. And it doesn't give you a specific time and date. So it won't say on December 19th, you know, this will happen. But what it will do is it will give you events that will lead up to something happening or something changing. So in other words, if X person wasn't president, then, or didn't run for president and wasn't elected president, then most likely this won't happen or this will happen. It's a, it's a timeline. So... In, oh, I think it was 1979 is uh, when I appeared in Project Looking Glass, not the only one, as one of several. And it basically described all of the things that I was going to do in this video that these people saw. 
And if you know who used to run Project Looking Glass, one group ran it and another group were the actual seers, I guess you would say. And so there were 12 women. These were the original 12 women from the Thule Society, T-H-U-L-E. And, and if all 12 actually saw the same thing, then it was 99% certain that it would come to pass. So the, in the, oh, in the seven, late 70s, early 80s, the CIA and a number of other groups saw all of these people that were going to make this change in these videos. I call them the file people. So there are people that are supposed to do certain things, and then there are duplicates. So in other words, there are additional people that can perform that same function. The, during the late 70s and early 80s, the CIA ran a DNA program throughout the world looking for these people. They were identified by faith and by DNA. And I happened to be one of those people. So I popped up on the radar in the first time in 1998, and then everything kind of died off a little bit, and it wasn't time yet. So according to the timeline, there were events that had not yet taken place, plus I wasn't old enough, according to the timeline, for, for things to start changing. In 2010, I went on a trip to actually get gold for the United States. The economy had just, you know, the market had just crashed at the end of 2008, and I found what I thought was a trustee of this trust with lots of money. Some, it was a lady out of Thailand. So I traveled to, you know, all around Europe, all around um, Eastern Europe, and we were going to trigger the system at that time in order to transfer gold to the U.S. That was my goal. That was the only reason why I was there. And everybody called me. I had some friends that, you know, were from the U.S. and then also people I had met on this trip. And they said, oh, you're the new trustee. I go, what do you mean I'm the new trustee? I was just there trying to get gold and make a little fee for doing a good job. And um, the Russian government came because I was in Russia at the time. The Russian government came and, and basically told me that all of the votes were unanimous, and I, they came back where I was the trustee. So I thought, well, gee, I can do some really great humanitarian things. You know, little did I know that, that it was going to lead me down this journey to where we are today. You know, I had so much to learn. I didn't know much of anything. I mean, I, w I had been in banking for most of my whole life, so probably at that time about 18 years. So, I mean, I definitely knew a lot about macro and microeconomics. Um, but I, I had no idea that, that it was going to turn out to be what it is today. Okay. That's uh, interesting that you have a banking background. I, I'm not sure I knew that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to back up a little bit in the historical narrative you gave us, because one of my biggest problems has been how the earth dwellers, as I call them, the people like me that walk the earth, that are mortal, that uh, appear in this plane as carnal human beings and live our lives in, in, this, in this life cycle, wound up being essentially slaves to a system hierarchy that includes off-world beings and covens and families, parents, all of these different groups and how the organic human being was basically enslaved, which goes back, I understand, in ancient narratives. So the question becomes this, who has the title deed to the earth? Who is the dominant sovereign? As it stands now, we do following the August 2016 peace treaty. We were not the controllers of this planet, and we haven't been for 16 and a half thousand years. Um, that was the D group and, uh, and their slaves. You gotta remember, it's not just humans that are slaves here. A lot of the uh, beings underground 
were also slaves. They were brought here for different reasons. Some came here for trade, but they were brought here to enforce the peace treaty, uh, the martial law. This is going back 16 and a half thousand years. And a lot of them uh, have interfered badly. They took advantage of our lack of knowledge, our lack of spiritual awareness, and uh, our general forgetness, forgetfulness as such. And, and so that's why you've heard all these stories about abductions and uh, night visits and all this stuff. Now, what you'll have noticed, or people may not have noticed, but not many people observe things the way uh, we kind of do, is in the last two years, there's hardly been any stories about ETs. And the reason is they're not interfering anymore. They're, in, they're here now to enforce the peace treaty, not enforce martial law. And that changed everything. You know, people ask for, uh, keep asking for, when's the event happening? Well, it already has. <laughs> the event. Of them. Yeah. You know, uh, there's been a, a list of about 33 uh, events of the last five years. You know, in a, in essence, in 2012, uh, that they were doomed. Their contract was up. Yes, they got an extension, but in essence, they were doomed, and it was humanity's time. So, humanity now is in sole control of this planet as of August uh, 2016. And it's up to us. It's no guarantee that we're going to run it any better than the clowns have or the others. Um, but we have to make steps to ensure we have sufficient people acting in, uh, in integrity and push a way forward for us all not service to self and greed and all that stuff. We have to work together, forget countries, forget religions and all that nonsense, which is all divide and conquer, and actually work together. This is why Kim has uh, contacted uh, what we call the clowns, Rothschilds and all the others, because they've been lied to as well. You know, people think, oh, these Illuminati, uh, you know, we both know, uh, well, both know people who were born into the Illuminati family, and we both read and uh, done the Sfarley show um, and that work. They get tortured from, from children, so that you know, yeah, it may seem uh, great uh, to a lot of people that they've got all this money and all this wealth, but they're not happy, are they? <laughs> you know, they've, they've lost a lot, uh, and the key to what Kim's been doing and the team's been doing is going around the world speaking to presidents and prime ministers and uh, heads of state and agencies and families, you name it. Kim's spoken to all of them and, and teaching them that they were, you've all been lied to. It's a different world now, but on a different timeline. We have been since January the 1st, 2013. And nothing they do will ever work again because it's not their time, it's the people's time, and it's time the people stood up for themselves and look after each other. That's what we, we've done with THI. We've got people all over the world, who, most who have never met each other, all caring and sharing for each other, not dog-eat-dog. So to bring it back, humanity for the first time in 16,500 years, and maybe even further back than that, is in sole control of this planet. So humanity collectively in terms of how we operate through these offices of governments or humanity as a defined collective consciousness, because from my perspective, there are many, many beings who walk about on the earth on two legs that I don't consider to be human, that I know aren't human. Yeah, and probably right. Um, I think we're in this interesting space now because there's so much distortion and convolution you know, that Thomas and Kim and I talked about this before we went on air tonight about the level of distortions that occur inside of this so-called alt-media atmosphere and what's going on there right now with just just silliness of people parading their ignorance. So yeah. we... 
we're in this position now where nobody knows who the leaders are. There doesn't seem to be a definable paradigm for transition because every step forward looks to be counter moved by another step sideways, which is exactly how they've they've worked this always. I mean, you know, they don't necessarily push you back. They just push you off the line. So going into this, how do we begin to recalibrate our understanding of how the world structures are formed and working? Hope that wasn't too wordy a question. No. Well, can I? Can I? Can I? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Start with this one. Uh, okay. Um, this is the this is the issue, right here. Everybody's saying who are the leaders, and and what you have to understand is a leader is always at the bottom. A real leader is at the bottom of the totem pole. A boss or a dictator, which is what our firm, former leader was, um, is always at the top. And he considers a boss or a dictator would consider everyone else inferior to them, which is the reason why the dragon families, I guess you would call them, or the order, considers everyone and every government an inferior party or an inferior being to them. We have to stop looking for a leader. We have to become that leader ourselves. Nature will dictate you have alpha males, you have beta males, you have alpha females, you have beta females, and and then there are varying degrees in between. If nature takes its course, alpha females or males, whichever it is, it doesn't matter which one, will become the leaders because that is nature, and betas will always follow. that, That is a natural course of things, and that is what... Our predecessors, or my predecessor, I should say, tried very much um, to, to disrupt. You know, you have different movements that will tell you that, that 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 whole process has been disrupted. And we have to go back to the natural order of things. You know, there, there are leaders in this world. You do not need to be a president to be a leader. You do not need to have billions of dollars to be a leader. It just happens to be that that's what everybody looks towards. And everybody needs to stop looking towards the richest guy in the room or the president in the room or to be that leader. Yeah. Um, you know, Thomas is a leader amongst his group of people. There are thousands of people that listen to Thomas. There are thousands of people that listen to you, Randy. You are a leader. You know, you've been a leader long before the chickens and the, and the Corey Goods and the Shanes and all the people popped up on the alternative media, you, you were you were actually educating and leading the people into something better. Yeah. And these are the this is what is necessary. If people are looking for leaders, you got to look for the doers. So yeah. you don't. It could be anybody. It could be the the person driving, you know, the the bus every single day, you know, in your in your local area. It doesn't matter who you are or what yeah. you you're not defined by your job. You're defined by your willingness to make that change and to help lead the people into something better and something different. That is who the leaders are. If we're looking for those people to emerge. One of the things that my very first THI show, I said we have to think and act differently. Uh, It was one thing we can't do with this new uh, human-based platform is copy their role model you know when uh, the Draco left and when uh, and there was only the M guy left um, people who we perceived as leaders be it presidents be it military generals you name it were all puppets in the game much to uh, <laughs> their chagrin they thought they were important and the thing is, it's more important to do important work than to be important. But being important is just the ego. Now, we've all seen um, extraordinary changes over the last five years uh, in various ways. We ask for the truth. We're getting the truth. Things are being disclosed and things are being revealed we never thought uh, possible. But 
the problem uh, when I'm, I remember the first conversation I had with Kim, uh, you know, and Kim was saying, we're talking to these people and talking to that people. And I said to her at the time, I said, you're probably wasting your time, but you never know, you've always got to try. Um, because all these people that we think are important around the planet, be it Kissinger's, be it Putin, be it Trump or whatever, are all pawns in the game. They're not leaders, they're followers. And, and be it the covens, be it the parents, everyone had a level and they were all following orders from the one above. And all the orders at the top, which is Marduk, he didn't tell them the full picture. So they don't know how the banking system works. They don't know how governments work. They don't know how, how life works, nothing. And this is a big problem that we're going to uh, have to um, quickly address is the lack of knowledge of all walks of life, be it science, be it banking, be it government, you name it. You've got people at the top of uh, Wells Fargo who doesn't understand micro or macro economics. How can you get a position like that? Well, that was the old system and that's how how it worked well it didn't work but it worked for the top order that's the way they designed it, it wasn't designed to work it was designed to fail it was a harvesting program of the whole planet of all living beings and the resources that timeline that program has now failed and it's up to us to create a new one we have to take the steps, and everyone is important in it. Yes, some people will play more important roles because they have different skill sets or different abilities, but everyone has to participate and, and not look to President Trump to fix things or Putin to fix things. You know, they, they are learning themselves. Trump's learned extraordinary things in the last 18 months he didn't think possible. And people think because he's the president, he knows everything. No, he doesn't, because it, you come into that compartmentalization again, where President Trump is level 23 on the security level, and you've got people in the military who are on 49 cosmic level. And Trump doesn't have access to those 26 layers of knowledge because he doesn't have the need to know. And, and what we have to change is, is those levels of the 26 above the president has to be lowered with an executive order down to level 23, which can then be disseminated to the public. You're never going to get disclosure with those 26 layers. They're your deep state those 26 layers, everything compartmentalized on a massive scale and nobody knows all the pieces. Kim does, because Kim's been in the system and also has, has the structure of the whole order. And this is what we're, what is going to be required going forward, a lot of education or teaching. Right now, we occupy a substratum of a very tiny sliver of what you would call media. And people were going to ask, exactly how is it that this tiny little show called Truth, Honor, Integrity, uh, anchored by this gentleman from Liverpool, an expat <laughs> Brit, winds up exposing the global order and the unraveling of said global order, and why wasn't this on CNN, MSNBC, all the other alphabet agency frequencies that are out there? But this isn't the way things are supposed to work in the world. No, no because you think in the old way. It doesn't work in the old way. It works in the new way. You know, this is what the cabal don't understand. I, you know, you, you've heard my show and, and members love it when I say, uh, they tried this and it failed. They tried this and it failed. And, and it's a completely different paradigm as of January the 1st, 2013. It, everything changed. People 
were at the time in the alt media were all complaining because uh, of David Wilcock and his uh, he was transitioning ten days earlier and nobody else was um, and nobody did. Damn it! So, <laughs> you know the bastards. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, we could have transitioned uh, Wilcock, Corey, and all the blue chickens off the planet, and we could have got on with things. But you you mentioned earlier. Since then, you know, uh, everything stuck in a time loop. I've discussed this on my own show. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, you know, and the difference between uh, what gets taught in our two shows and and the rest is market, because it, they seem to be stuck in that same time period of 2012, 2013, 2014, Nasara, Jasara. We're, we're traveling to 5D and all this nonsense, you know. And uh, all they're doing is uh, is distracting and delaying. They can't stop it. It's like uh, the, the blocking uh, the funds being released into America because America's under the financial assassination program. But eventually they're going to run out of blocks. Okay, um, you just it, walked through something that I want to get into with you and Kim. Yeah. These funds. Now, a lot of people have asked me, my own wife has asked me, exactly what is the purpose of these funds? What will they accomplish? And how does it ultimately get to the place where it betters the life of the average person rather than the harvesting that's gone on through the banking system so far? And I, uh, So let me, let me parse that. First off, the release of assets into the United States would have to benefit the most immediate needs of the average person rather than and continuing to enrich the military industrial intelligence agency complex how do how do we get there well Kim? this is what we're this is what we're working on right now <coughs> the issue that we have is yes we have a government and the government well not always but most recently the federal reserve agreement to print currency on behalf of the government has expired so it's sort of like the elephant in the room right now the president is aware of it most of the agencies are aware of it and there the fed is trying to cling to that right and the government is trying to clean out the deep state so that they can then take over that right to print currency again. There's a lot more detail that could go into that, but that's a general overview. So, so when, you, when you look at the average everyday person right now in the way that the world works, the average everyday person needs cash, fiat or otherwise. You can't go down to the store with your bar of gold and exchange it at Walmart for some groceries, right? Sure. You have to go down. You have to go down with dollar bills. So the system runs on yes, there are ca there is cash on pallets and whatnot, and, and yes, we're working on a plan for those types of things. But the average everyday person pretty much functions in today's society on digital cash. So the cash has to come from the system, and it has to get to you. Now, how do you do that? Because they've had a 1,000 years, and since the global electronic banking system was implemented in 1978, they've had what, 40, 50, almost 50 years now to implement all of these cyber hacks into the banking system, which work to their benefit. So I have to get cash from our system to you at some banking institution or credit union somewhere, right? Right. What people don't understand is that since the agreement expired, which was at the end of 2017, so it's not even been quite a year, since we've been actively pushing through all of these blocks, any bank using an IBM computer, as an example, had a back door to IBM. IBM was data collecting on behalf of the cabal. The security certificates, the SSLs, anything required 
you know, the banks have uh, their own firewalls and all these systems, which they purchase from a third party entity. The government also had the same thing. So to get from here to there, so far we've cleaned up hundreds of thousands of cyber hacks, which were implemented over that 40 to 50 year period, just to stop you personally and all of the yous out there listening to the call from receiving $1 from the trust. Because they know the second the people receive $1 and spend it, it's over for them. Because their control mechanisms are completely obsolete. So, you know, every I have figured out how to transfer funds out of the system by SWIFT, by WIRE, by EFT, by direct port to port transactions, and multiple different methods. And then I get blocked at the bank level, or I was getting blocked at somewhere in between. So every time I send funds from our institution, and the way it's registered, to your institution, Randy, it's a, it, I, I find something new. So I send them out every day or every other week or whatever it is, you know, based on the timeline of what's going on until I can finally hit that destination. Right now we have probably about eight or ten pending uh, um, transfers that look like they're actually going to clear probably Tuesday because I think today is a banking holiday in the U.S. So the ultimate aim and the ultimate goal is to transfer just as much in funds to the people as is being transferred to the government. That has been the structure that worked on a macro and micro level, which means that the government received on the 17th of March $1.8 trillion to cover the budget. I used a loophole so Rothschild couldn't steal it through an agreement from 1976 that was never executed upon. That left me with $1.8 trillion for private persons and projects in the United States. So where am I going to land it? I have to land it in a private banking institution. We have gotten to the point where even for some of the major projects, the Treasury Department is allowing certain certain projects to be uh, funded through the Treasury Department, meaning we can deposit money there just like we deposited the budget there. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. We've gotten presidential orders as an example for disaster cleanup in Florida. Um, we've been fighting for six weeks now uh, to get the people out of the way of the Treasury Department in order to deposit that those funds there for that disaster cleanup. Uh, FEMA's blocking us. FEMA's been a cash cow for Rothschild in the deep state for many, many years. Mm-hmm. You know? yep. Nothing yep. actually gets done that they do ever, and they keep yep. buying these equip- this equipment at, at, at ten times the price, and nothing ever gets to the people. I mean, if you actually, they're, they're right now, they are sweeping the Internet for anyone posting a Twitter, a Facebook, a YouTube, or any type of video on the Internet that actually shows the real state of affairs in Florida, Alabama, and, and Georgia, and in, in the Carolinas. They are trying to avoid that from getting out there every way possible. And meanwhile, I called FEMA actually on the first day, and I, per the president's request, and told them this money is available, are you ready? And they refused, and they said they had funding from other sources, which they told me was Rothschild. So everybody has been waiting for this global reset to happen, so then Rothschild will have the money to then give to FEMA, so then FEMA could then go down to Florida and do probably next to nothing anyway. And But it's something is better than nothing, right? And And... <clears throat> where, you know, it's six weeks have passed and we're all still in the same position. So to answer your question, Randy, I agree with you 150%. The people should have just as much financial backing as the government has, and they should be equal. Not one group, not 1%, not you know, 99% this time. And then it's almost somewhat irrelevant all of this midterming and the so on and so forth is going on nobody's going to care no well yeah, we, well, well the, the structure basically dictates that you're just voting for one of two wings on the same bird. That's the whole joke behind you know the yeah. the, the, bi, the bipartisan system well you two choices 
Yeah, what essentially uh, is going to happen, like Kim says, there's one, 1. 1.8 trillion went to the government, which is to run the government, and then 1.8 trillion goes to the people. So let me... We, we then okay. Uh, okay. have to take our own responsibility of how we spend it. So in essence, we come, uh, the people in essence, like come like a mini government, we we make decisions that are going to improve people's lives, whether it be um, let's fix everyone's teeth, let's fix everyone's health, or let's remove people from credit card debt, or you know let's make loans where where people are not losing their homes. There's, there's many many ideas. Let's clean. Uh, let's pr- uh, provide water uh, in uh, low level regions. You know, let's provide funding to clean up this this piece of land or that piece of land, or let's purchase this piece of land and do some uh, agriculture with it. Or, you know, so so then the people uh, become self responsible, which is what we've lost as a, uh, as humanity. Everything gets handed over uh, to the government. Government must must fix must fix it, but the government has no control. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. You, you heard me mention about the 26 levels above the president. That tells you that the, those are the people that run the government, not President Trump or not Obama, uh, although Bush Jr. was involved, as we know, because of that family. But, you know, this is an opportunity, and that's all it is, and we have to take it by the scruff of the neck and not... Uh, fight over this and fight over that and be distracted by elections and, and all kinds of other rubbish on the mainstream media and all work together to fix the relevant countries. And it's not just in, in America, it's every single country and people have to step up and stand in their own personal responsibility and take actions. Let me back this up for a minute. We have $1.8 trillion, $1.8 trillion yeah. Given to fund the 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 operations of the United States government, that and is a fraction of the money that has been disappeared from the um, military budget repeated yeah. times over the years, as we know. Correct. Yeah. And my question to you, Kim, in the course of funding the government through the process of these funds. Is there any hope that we're going to get forensics accounting and that we're ever going to see where the money actually has been disappeared to? And ultimately, I think the oh, people... I can tell you where it's been disappeared to. Give me the date and the time, and I'll tell you exactly where it disappeared <laughs> So, So we know that much in, in granular detail. Why are we not? Yep. Why are we not going after these people much as you would in a bankruptcy proceeding, where where debtors basically have to pay back that which they owe, or at least you know under bankruptcy some fraction of it? If we were able to reclaim the funds that have been dispersed through illegal activities on every level of the government, how much money are we looking at sitting on? We'd have a surplus. Uh, 24 well, trillion. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's asinine. It's, it's yeah. A lot. I mean, if you're just speaking of the military specifically, um, Rothschild et al., because they believe they have power of attorney over all financial affairs and all of the citizens and all of the money that the citizens own. This is what they told me. And I could read you the statement I got back from them if you like, but um, this is what they told me. They told me that they own 50 percent, 50 to 80 percent of every single corporation in America, every citizen in America, the government, um, anything the government has or earns or receives um, as as it relates to the United States. And they pretty much feel this way about the entire world. Now, does Rothschild have the money right now to pay us back meaning us the people, not us the trust, to pay us back the hundreds of quadrillions of dollars they've stolen in their 500-year tenure. Mm-hmm. And this also goes for the Chinese elders and the other dragon families as well. 
dragons are not all Chinese, as you know. British uh, uh, is the blue dragon, which is Rothschild. Um, the black dragon is a combination between American deep state and um, and China, uh, the Kuomintang. So if you're asking where did the money go, this is your answer. Um, it either goes to them or one of the corporations that they use the trust money to control. They also built everything they have off of all of the funds and assets that came out of the trust. During their tenure, until 2007, when they were completely cut off, you had to put something into the trust in order to get something out. So they would have to pledge a country's in-ground resources, as an example, or they would have to pledge a human soul, a.k.a. your birth certificate, Mm -hmm. or something Mm -hmm. else into the trust to get anything out. Because the person that sat in the chair before me was looking to own everything. By 2007, he pretty much did. Every parcel of land, every bit of drop of oil, every diamond in the ground, uh, basically he owned the entire planet. And then in 2007, he cut them all off. All of the dragon families were cut off. Why? Because he didn't care if they expired. Their system, he knew, was flawed. He had acquired every every rock of mineral of worth of any importance on this planet and every human in it by that point. He didn't care if they existed anymore. He just considered them slaves. So, you know, he had gotten everything he wanted and then therefore he cut them off from their paper, worthless paper that he created as of having a value so that they would take their power and their paper and their greed. And, and, and could, he didn't care because it was worthless in the universe. It's only worth something to us humans. It means nothing in the rest of the world or in the universe, and it has no value. So he was giving them something he deemed as worthless, which really is, in exchange for valuable minerals that were worth for technologies and all kinds of things. So the funds, the worthless papers that were stolen from the government by the other people who like to have control over the worthless papers, we know that they disappeared. They were spent on creating wars and false flags and diseases, and the SSP was funded this way uh, as well. All of the money that came out to fund the military also came out. Everybody says, well, where did the trillion dollars go? That's on the Internet. You know, everybody sees it a lot. It went to fund the SSP. Because the SSP does not exist, but it exists very much so. You just so, you just stepped into a quagmire with that. So you're telling me on one level, Catherine Austin Fitz is absolutely correct. Yeah, the S- uh, I don't, I don't know who uh, the, that is. The SSP uh, does exist. It's the Nazi breakaway group. It's been going on since the 40s. It's 100%. the same, same people. Uh, you know, uh, the same paperclip crew that uh, practically, uh, along with the Zionists, are running the American country, or have done, not, not for much longer they won't. You know, the SSP are um, controlling out of Norfolk, Virginia, that in Wright-Patterson, below Wright-Patterson, uh, right. not as far not as far down as not the, anymore <laughs> not as far down as they used to be able to go because uh, we kind of dealt with that situation but you know the SSP were the ones that fired the missile at Trump from uh, Widley Bay or Widley Island you know and it, it's all it's all uh, a big game to them and you just use different groups at different times but it's the same mask you know, and uh, the SSP does exist. You know, what Trump's trying to do is counteract the old SSP and create a new one because eventually when uh, the knowledge uh, and reality of what real life is now, not then, uh, kicks in, we're going to need a protection, our own protection force for the planet, not to fight in Syria or Afghanistan or any other country that, that playing uh, ma- you know magic war games, which is just a money generating scheme, and it gets rid of history and um, a load of uh, 
soul dyers. That's how it works. You know, but we're going to need a, uh, a global space force because we have to learn how to protect ourselves. Because what happened in 16 and a half thousand years ago when the Draco came in, they came in as the saviors. We'll save you from the wars that were going on then. And it didn't turn out too well. So on that level, we're going to need not an American space force, a global space force where all the countries are working together. And going forward, not only do we have to share um, technology and, and space, we have to share, learn to share resources as well. So just because there's oil in North Dakota doesn't mean it belongs to America or the Americans. It belongs to everybody. All in-ground resources belongs to every single person on the agreed, planet. Agreed, agreed, agreed. And, yeah. and we have to get, we have to start being adult in our decisions, not childlike. This, no, that's my ball. You're not having it. We have, that's childlike. We have to become adults and we have to set up uh, a new version of the UN where every country is involved and it's all about sharing resources and sharing technology, sharing ideas and plan for a global space force where we, humanity, can protect, protect ourselves from outside issues. We're going to need it. You know, we can't expect the Galactic Council to babysit us for thousands of years like the, pet, the parents and the Draco and the Covens have. We have to be more clever. Okay, we're bumping up on almost the end of the first hour. I want to honor the people that are in the chat room. There's a few of you out there and good good comments. <clears throat> One question has come up. This may actually um, be a key question because it's one that I've had as well. Kim, where is the bank that handles the trust transactions? Is it a sovereign bank, a Swiss bank? <laughs> Okay, um, let me give you the brief structure, because uh, you said we're coming up at the end of the hour here. Um, the trust has its own country code. Every central bank in the world has its own country code. So the trust is a bank unto itself, and technically, for financial purposes, is a country unto itself. The assets held within the trust are held within that jurisdiction. So they're held underneath that country code. Does it have a flag? Does it fly a country? Is it a flag flying country? Does it have plots of land? Well, it owns all the land because the establishment of the then kingdoms, then now governments, was all established underneath that country code. Therefore, every central bank is a subsidiary of the trust right now, and every country is a sub sovereign of the trust. The only true sovereign is the trust. This is what we're trying to unwind. The, as an example, the Queen of England is a sub-sovereign of the trust. The Holy See is a sub-sovereign of the trust. The Vatican is a sub-sovereign of a sub-sovereign of the trust. The Rothschilds and the Dragon families call themselves sovereigns and whatnot because they were trustees for the trust. So the fact that they were the only remaining quote-unquote sovereigns, not yet enslaved by the system is is over now because their sovereignty no longer exists because they are no longer part of the trust. So them and the thousands of dragon family members worldwide promising global immunity and sovereignty, the UN is no longer a sovereign entity unto itself. The Bank for International Settlements is no longer a sovereignty unto itself as it was a sub-sovereign of the trust. As the main sovereign, the trust can revoke anyone's sovereignty who is not adhering to the rules and regulations of sovereignty, which is you cannot you can defend yourself in the life of an innocent. You cannot be an aggressor or an attacker in any way, shape, or form, so not just physically but also financially. There are many different things that you cannot do as a sovereign person, taking responsibility for your own self and your own actions. We are working to unwind this system of control. The U.S. is a sub-sovereign of a sub-sovereign of the trust, meaning the U.S. right now is registered as a sub-sovereign of crown 
which is Rothschild, not the Queen of England. Yeah. It is the reason why every president goes over and is and is goes through a second inauguration underneath the Queen, because she was the sovereign, granting crown sovereignty as a sub sovereign of the trust. So. All of these things have to be unwound, but to answer your question, the banks, you know, that you see with these uh, people running around with these assets saying, oh, they're at UBS or, oh, they're at this bank or that bank, well, yes and no, okay? The way banks are structured are the holding company is actually held within the trust. The bank itself, so UBS of Switzerland or UBS in the United States, as an example, are only corporations formed under the holding company, which own all the banks, which is within the country code listed under the trust. They are all owned by the trust. You have to put something in to get something out. So when J.P. Morgan wanted to form J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, all of the stock of the holding company went to the trust. So yes, there may be an owner and shares being sold of J.P. Morgan N.A., North America, but the real holding company is in the trust. They're just not recognizing that as that as that fact at this moment because the people who are running it, you know, want their trusteeship back and they think that they should have ownership, which is what in today's if you if anybody's uh, been watching the internet, which is what Anna Bond Wrights wrote today. Give the trustees, give the old trustees back their rights. Uh, no. We'll go into that in the second hour because there's so much you could we could say about Anna von Weitz. And, um, I don't want to go there right now, but that thanks. That was a pretty condensed answer, and it covered a lot of the material in the document uh, that uh, Thomas had shared with me from back in June, which we'll post up with this show on on the website or YouTube or wherever this winds up. So we're going to take about a six-minute music break here, give everybody a chance to just breathe and absorb, and then we're going to come back. And um, I want to go into um, this global martial law, because I think, I think this is where we can kind of pop the top off of some things. So we'll do all that on the other side of Off Planet Radio. I am Randy Moggins, and uh, we'll be right back. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. And we're back to hour number two of Off Planet Radio on uh, Spreaker.com, oddly enough. And uh, <laughs> it's one eleven on 11, 11, 11. The numbers just keep lining up. So I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of tend to get to a place where I go, you know, this shit means something. And um, it's been a good ride so far. How y'all doing out there? Um, it's nice to be live again. Uh, wow. Um, 
This is actually kind of fun for me because uh, I don't have to worry about video and I don't have to worry about the echo chamber of YouTube and all the distractions. And yet at the same time, we get to plant our feet down and kind of interact with people um, in a live venue, which is which is kind of fun. The energy's there. And you're all part of that. I need to say thanks to um, a group of people who are very special to me. And that is our people who support us on Patreon. And this is not an ad. It's not uh, not asking you to go join or anything. I just want to say thanks to them because they make it possible for us, me and Emily, to do public side things like this that are important. That's that's part of what support does. It, we give them back certain proprietary material, but in exchange, we're allowed to operate in the public venue for the greater good of getting information out to humanity. And it's up to you to decide if it's valuable or not. It's up to you to discern the truth of what you hear. And it's up to you to then take the information that you get and step out and do something positive, because that's what this is really all about. And with that, I welcome back Thomas Williams and Kim. Guys, we're ready for round two. Yes, we are. We are indeed. And uh, so... (laughs) We kind of we kind of left this dangling in the air, but there is um, obviously a fair amount of distortion out there in the echo chamber. And uh, you brought up Anna von Reitz, and I, I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to reprise that statement or just let it stand for what it is. Well, you know, she's a very knowledgeable person. Yes, in, she is. In, as it relates to, you know, all of the legal things that have happened here in the States, how we got here from there, and and for the education that she's given to all of the people in the world that follow her, I have the deepest amount of respect for her. Why this woman talks to me on the Internet blog for the whole world to see and hear in, in a way that is less than savory, of, especially with someone with her level of knowledge and experience, is beyond me. I, I, she just keeps doing it over, I mean, I've asked her to please just leave me out of your things, go back to your legal things, you're educating the people, and I think that's great. And she just keeps going on and on and on. You know, she, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, the, the problem with her is, uh, as she's been, um, Someone else is pulling her strings. Uh, we, uh, I think, uh, regular listeners to THI know exactly who's pulling her strings and feeding her scripts and telling her to disrupt. And, uh, you know, she has, as Kim said, so much to offer. We, we did, uh, or Kim did, um, reach out to Anna Von Wrights at least twice. And unfortunately, Anna Von Wrights or her... Um, puppet masters decide that they wanted uh, one third of American, uh, America's in-ground resources to hand to the Vatican and subsequently Chinese elders. You know, so she's not interested in helping the people as she portrays. And yet she does help the people, you know, with, with her history and her legal stuff. But we would love nothing better for Anna von Wrights to drop the puppet masters we know she's working for and come and help the people. She has much to offer. That's why Kim reached out to her. But both sets of calls were for money for non-existent tribes or Chinese elders or the Vatican, which is a, a private secretary to the Pope. You know, well, I think we've all had enough of the Vatican control and uh, um, heinous uh, methods and... Uh, experimentation programs called religion and we need to move past that and move forward and so we would love Anna Von Wrights to step forward with us, we would love David Wilcox to come and help us and not work for Covens and, and uh, Gaia TV you know even Drake, even Keenan you know, it, we're all in it and, and all of them are being used by higher elements where they can't operate. Step out of it and come back and join the people, not look after the self. This is going to be the key going forward. It's not going to be about service to the self. It's about service to others. 
That's why me and Kim are in these positions, because we're all about service to others. You can't do this job being service to self. It's too easy to walk away, you know, with goons, with guns uh, threatening you and trying to abduct you and all kinds of other stuff. It's easier to walk away. So, if yeah. I know of on rights wants to quit uh, her puppet masters and come and work with us, we would welcome welcome it. But she she can forget about the old trustees coming back into the. They did nothing for humanity. The Chinese elders, as they're called, have been part trustees for the last five hundred years. How much do they give to the people for humanitarian projects then? Zero. And then always going to give zero. This time, well, it's going to be different. The humanitarian projects as conducted, and we mentioned FEMA, that's largely just a ring of uh, funneling assets in and out. Yeah. And just, just as you pointed out in your own show, Thomas, how they were basically ordering materials and then shipping them back later while the payments remain on the ledgers, there's no refund. So this is actually corporations that are feasting off of the uh, largesse of the people and the misery of the people that are affected by these, these um, what I sometimes believe are definitely man-made um, yeah. natural occurrences. I have, um, I have a, a question create the here. problem, create the solution, right? Exactly, exactly. And make, make a war, fund the war. And make money in the process. That's been the mantra for the last, well, you know, in our accounting, at least 100 years. Um, there's a question in the chat group, and this actually goes into both the material that was in the document and also some of my own questions. But um, the question came up, we all have treasury accounts, or at least used to, although not everyone knows it. So we should use the treasury to disperse funds. Only one institution to, uh, sorry, that's a little clumsy there. But basically it goes into the question of the fact that we had trust accounts established largely as a result of the 1933 bankruptcy, which was a pay-and-go system as it was originally set out, but was ultimately derailed, and we were put on the spit for uh, paying for everything twice. Yeah. Comments on that? Okay. Um, let me tell you, uh, the treasury accounts that everybody is talking about, I assume, is where the birth certificates were pledged right, right. Uh, as collateral. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. That's my understanding, okay. yes. Okay. The accounts that exist where the birth certificates are deposited are called Treasury of USA. Treasury of USA is a dragon family or was a dragon family organization. It has zero connection to the Department of Treasury of the United States. It is not a government organization. It was a private dragon family uh, corporation, for lack of a better term. Slush fund. <laughs> right. So the way the program was sold to the participants, which would be the Ways and Means Committee in the United States, your Department of Commerce and the U.S. government. And the way it was actually sold, and it's not only the U.S. that has this program, by the way, it's several different countries throughout Eastern and Western Europe that have the program. The, they guesstimate, based on the year that you were born, based on the, what they believe at the, from the age of 18 to the age of 50, then it went to 55, then 60, then 65, how much in tax you will pay in the future. And as an example, of if you were born in, in 1970, they guesstimate that you'll pay some odd $10 million in taxes over your lifetime. You know, just as an example between, you figure state tax, you have uh, sorry income tax, you have social security tax, you have that tax, you have sales tax, you have tax when you travel, tax on gas, tax on every single thing you do in your life, right? And there, the reason why they kept increasing and changing, you know, from income tax and no income tax and income tax again, and I'm going back to the 1800s, and um, 
then you have you had uh, war bonds, you had all kinds of things that were done over the years, right? The reason why the tax keeps increasing is not only is, is they needed a higher value to the bonds to sustain the program. So the program, the way it was sold to the people, was that if we deposited these birth certificates into the trust, which is where they are, by the way, or hopefully not for much longer, but where they are currently, through the ANNA system in Belgium in cooperation with the XN system in Belgium, and you can look these things up, they do exist, <coughs> the trust would trade against those bonds and issue payment against those bonds for programs that are to sustain the health and welfare of you as a citizen, for example, of the United States. Things like Social Security, as an example, um, uh, public edu free public education, uh, the police department, the Coast Guard, the Pentagon, the um, uh, EBT or food stamp programs, uh, free health care, Medicare, uh, you know, retirement payments, these types of things. This is what it was supposed to be utilized for. So the money would go every time into what's called Treasury of USA, and then it would trickle into the government department during budget time. So the when, when the program started, you know, there was some odd 98% or so of the funds that were going into the government program. Uh, Department of Education and whatnot. By the time it ended in 2007, when the trust bought its last bond in March of 2007, um, there was probably somewhere around, I don't know, 2 to 8 percent going into the government program. And <clears throat> so it, it ended at that time. The Treasury of USA's contract officially ended with the trust in March of 2014. Therefore, the trust was no longer obligated at that time to buy any bonds, and it was no longer obligated to return any trade proceeds through Treasury of USA into the government, or any, any of the respective governments. China also has a similar program. Denmark has a program. UK and all the Commonwealth has the program. You know, a number of different places have the program. And in the places where the program didn't exist, free public education doesn't exist, as one example. Um, the reason why the IRS, virtually every dime that goes into the IRS, it goes out to Rothschild Bank right now, um, is because the coupons on the bond note of your person are are the taxes collected from you as a person. It goes to pay off the bond note or the debt. Does this need to be the case any longer? The answer is no. It can be completely unwound, and, and the IRS needs to return back on the continental United States soil, and all the taxes, 100% collected, need to go to the government where they belong. Therefore, if this is done, and, and Thomas and I have done the math together for hours, one day, remember Thomas, yep. we could actually go to a straight spending tax, which means you pay on luxury items, you pay on non-essential items. Um, I think there would have to be a small half a percent or a quarter of a percent or something tax on food, and you could eliminate income tax completely and totally. Yeah. You know, when, when I heard, heard you talk about that, first off, the IRS is not constitutionally mandated as or any of Correct. the alphabet agencies that we presently have umbrellaed under USA Inc. And my question is, is it even useful at this point to continue to use an agency which has no lawful mandate and which has such egregious crimes against individuals on, on its records. I mean, they as one of the aware. people who has been terrorized yep. by the IRS, I, I yep. really would hope this organization would be just taken down and we would go back to the Treasury itself actually doing its job and the Congress actually doing its job. Let's talk about Congress for a minute. This is the largest pack of criminals sitting in one body on planet Earth outside of the Vatican. And yet nobody ever brings up the fact that these guys have been screwing us 
for a hundred years now. The problem with the, uh, for the sake of the IRS, you know, was a bro- this has been brought up in the show. Yeah, I, I, I think we have to change the name uh, because of it, uh, the implications behind it. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who work for the IRS that are not criminals and corrupt. And there's a lot of people who work because of the IRS, accountants and whatnot. Uh, and uh, financial advisors. <laughs> well, uh, as I said to, well, as I had told one accountant who worked for the IRS, uh, you do have the option to go get an honest job somewhere, because yeah, I, from I, my I, standpoint, I that. you know, there, that, there has to be, uh, in my opinion, anyway, there has so, to be. A, I'll get off of this fa- in a second. A phasing, <laughs> a phasing out, and a phasing in, or a phasing in and a phasing out. Yeah. Uh, the first thing, uh, which is uh, under, is already being worked on, uh, as Kim said, is getting the IRS off Puerto Rico and back yeah. onto mainland uh, yeah. United States, where it comes under American control, not USA Inc. You know, it, it, it's important people understand USA is not America. United right. States right. is Europe, not America. Uh, and the government's been run by uh, USA Inc., operating as the government, but it's not the real government. We haven't had a real government since 1871. We haven't had the original constitution since 1871, the organic one. And so all this is being worked on currently. Um, we technically uh, haven't had a sitting Congress since 1861. Yeah. Lincoln reconvened then right. under, under, um, under martial law. Yeah, exactly. Which, that's, but, when yep. it, that's when the first income tax come in. And, and, and I did kind of pop off there a little bit about Congress and, and the IRS, and those are personal triggers, I admit. But <laughs> on, I, I think we have to go back and understand something about the United States to where America, as it was founded, maybe the reality is that this was always a business venture. I went to Jamestown Colony uh, maybe about seven years ago, and looked at the documents on display there. It's very clear to me that from the very beginning, this was a business venture funded That's by correct. the crown, by the crown. And maybe part of the reclamation of America is to admit what we are and then to move forward under a different structure. Yeah. Um, the others? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, 100 years before America became, quote unquote, America. Not yeah. that there weren't people living here, and it wasn't a, a functioning country that had been trading for thousands of years with other countries, by the way. Yeah. Um, the land now known as America or the United States or the Republic or whatever you want to call it, um, it was actually designed to be the power center for the New World Order. In 1975, that plan was revised. Uh, where they decided, and in 75, they were going to start breaking down America and have it run from the east, Mm -hmm. China. Yeah, they decided that America was getting too much power. Now, they decided uh, 70-some-odd years before World War II that the U.K. was going to no longer be the power center of the planet. They defined its weaknesses. On, as, as a, how would you say, the leader of the world, the new world order, right, sure. as that plot yeah. of land. They defined its weaknesses, and then they made sure that they didn't repeat that process in the land now known as the United States. So it was strategically chosen as a location for this based on its inaccessibility uh, to be attacked. In number yeah. one, that was one of the reasons, you know, it, yeah. It doesn't, yeah, and um, they intended to take over all of North America and make it one country. And if you've if been in the game long enough, you remember the Amero. Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah absolutely. The yeah. For all of North America, and oh, mm. now the Amero has become the dinar, and <laughs> they're selling that, and you know, <laughs> and the dins and the zings and the dongs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but 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 none, nonetheless, it was actually designed for their pleasure. It was never designed to be a free right. country. Right. 
Right. And so we have to so deal with, <laughs> you know, even even the native people and, and their asserted rights. And that's a whole other conversation that we don't have time for today. But one of the issues that comes up continuously in both my research and my inner thought process has to do with these structures called corporations, which go back as nearly as I can tell in known history to Samaria, Mesopotamia, that we've basically been running nation-state corporations for um, 10,000 years or more. This construct of the corporation appears to me to be, uh, I guess what you would call a, a form of AI, actually, because it basically harnesses the intellectual power, energy, and utility of human beings into a, a, a conglomerate that itself is recognized as, I don't want to use the word sovereign here, it is recognized as a an entity unto itself, in contrast to the living soul, which is each one of us that walk around on two legs and are inhabited by sewers. Is it possible that at some point we can end this grip of these corporations and do away with this? Do you know, just by virtue of the fact that all nation states in the Western world and largely in the East as well are also corporations, isn't it time we recognize the danger of this and begin to move towards a form of law that no longer recognizes the superiority of corporate entities? Yeah. The, um, I just want to make a quick comment about that. Um, in 1975, the plan of Hitler, uh, which was your previous to be ruler of the world person, um, as assigned by the Dragon families, and yes, the Chinese people paid for it, and yes, the Rothschilds paid for it, and yes, the Bushes paid for Hitler, and I have those documents. But the, yeah, we're the in, 19, in 1975, that plan was revised, and it's called the Non Compete Plan, and it was written. Uh, by a few generals, some American and some not, and it was spearheaded by Bush Sr. And the non-compete plan was a plan to control every industry on the planet Earth. So in other words, even if you invented a new widget, a new piece of technology, you would have to purchase your item from companies which they profited from. Now, the system is flawed. And this is what I had written in the previous statement. You hit a a precipice or a plateau in any kind of a non-compete plan because there is too much competition. There are too many countries walking away from the system. And there are too many companies that do not want to pay billions of dollars for a power plant that costs $100 million from the U.N., it was a nice control system, and I could explain it to you in, in detail, but you hit, they hit the precipice probably about two or three years ago. And, and you can't go back. It's been crumbling ever since just because the plan itself is flawed, not because anybody's doing anything about it. Yeah. Well, eventually, uh, look, people um, don't understand, or a lot of people uh, won't understand that this planet was a harvesting program. The whole mm-hmm. system was yeah. ran for uh, people, plants, animal, it, you name it, other beings uh, to be harvested, including all the resources, and then they were going to destroy this planet in, in total once once they got all the resources. And that's where we were heading towards in 2012, and that plan failed. And, uh, and that's uh, why some of them left at the time, uh, because it, it failed. You know, um, uh, changes are now be, uh, being made, and uh, you want to know how to uh, take the corporate structure down, down. Is is that when the trust funds come out, and people create new companies to do things in a better way, and hopefully in a in a a need basis, not a greed basis. You know, uh, we don't want, want uh, loads of millionaires. We want people sharing it all out. That that's the the difference between the old system and a new system. We can't all be greedy. We have to learn to share everything out. And so, 
if you are cutting your costs down and you haven't got ridiculous markup profits uh, that these corporations are doing, you can undercut them. So you don't, you don't have to knock them out. You just have to do things in a better way, work around them, you know, and uh, if we, if we uh, get good products and we create um, a network for argument's sake, the People's Club, and, and the People's Club funds uh, new, um, new corporations, and they're operating in a better way, whereby then they can create a cooperative. So you would vet a certain company to supply you, for argument's sake, uh, stationery. And if they're giving you uh, at ridiculous prices because of the high profit margins, then they would not be part of that co cooperative. And then uh, if they want to be part of it, then they'll come and adapt the same way. And then you suddenly you've got a cooperative of companies all working together all, all based on need for the people, not greed for themselves. And those and th those corporations will just fall away rapidly. And in, and in my opinion, um, this is one of the futures of the alternative media, yeah. because you do have the capacity to talk about, for example, alternative medicines that are available, mm -hmm. natural cures mm -hmm. for things. All of these things are should should be what the alternative media is focusing on alternative industries, things that are actually going to be beneficial to the human person. And you can do that in a bartering type way, like Thomas was just describing, or you can do that in a, in a you know, for, for financial means. But, yeah. you know, this is where all of the people don't know that there is an alternative. Yeah. You know, there are so many alternatives out there to the corporations and to what the corporates have to offer. This is where, in my opinion, these things are going to start. Because it's not going to start on CNN. No. They're certainly not going to start. <laughs> That's right. They're certainly not going to. But, but the one thing you can do, and eventually, is uh, once there's enough money within the alternative media, you can, you can eventually buy flight time on any channel you want. So the news may not be reporting it, but you can buy enough air time to run a three-minute commercial, mm. you know, talk, which talks about whatever it is you want. They can't reject it if you're paying for it. You're going to have to be smart about it because once the first commercial goes out explaining what's really going on, then <laughs> they're not going to talk to you again. So there's going to have to be the next guy and the next girl and the next person. And then, yep. and then, but as long as you're paying, they're going to air it. Yep. So this comes uh, into the other area I wanted to talk to, and this is a big subject, but I think I think we can address it. Thomas and I talked about this off air. Um, global martial law, and we're not talking right now about anything we've seen in this century, but something much more uh, ancient. So maybe you guys can, because this will actually inform the conversation of um, what is occurring now. One other thing I want to ask before we do that, Kim, do you have a blog? Do you have a public facing blog where people can reference any of your work? No. no, no, I don't. Okay. I, 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 I air certain things through Thomas. Um, occasionally, I respond to things, you know, on on other people's uh, blogs and and whatnot, just because I, I something I have input on or or feel needs to be addressed. I have no intention whatsoever of becoming a alternative media blog person <laughs> popular person i i'm sure not, sign of I sanity that, i would start talking about the blue chickens or purple chickens or some other you know whatever and then everybody would want to hear about it you know I, I have no intention of being popular to any in any circle anywhere okay at, thanks at all okay well let's go back to um the global martial law, the lockdown of planet Earth, and let's let's do the back history on this. Kim? Thomas, you want me to start? Okay. Yes. Yeah, cool. um, when I first got this position, I guess you would say, um, I was approached by the people you know as as M, which is not Marcos, and and uh, a couple the other two people here that I described as we're at the top of the world. Um, it had been within 30 days of, of me being in Russia where I was notified of this purported position. 
And um, they sent me this sheet of paper that's probably about six foot long and maybe about three or four foot wide. And I was actually going to, we were talking about doing video, and I was actually going to uh, show everybody um, on the video uh, this plan. Uh, it's called the Global Martial Law Plan. Now, Global Martial Law began on the planet Earth in 16,500 years ago. Um, at the time, there were between five to seven, it's debatable, tribes on the planet Earth. And one of the tribes was at war with another tribe, and in marched the Draco. And the Draco basically convinced one of those tribes that they would give them advanced weaponry if they would agree to global martial law. And under global martial law, the M, Etal, became the dictator of the world because under martial law, as you know, the head general is the one that takes over the country so to speak, or in this case, the planet. So they got their advanced weaponry, they won the war, and M took control, and he's been in control ever since. So he keeps revising the global Marshall Plan, where you will have one world order, um, and that world government will serve him at the time. He's dead now. And, um, <clears throat> and that was the plan he was always working towards, was to be the king of the world. So under the Global Martial Law Plan, it required them to control basically every resource on the planet Earth, um, but they definitely had a hierarchy and a structure. And this is what I wanted to point out. So somewhere at the top of the sheet is the three gentlemen, and he uses a, a Sun Tzu wheel type design. And I have posted this before, and, and Thomas can pass it along to you. Um, so they, the three of them were at the top. So it was a father and, and, and some brothers that were at the top. Then you had 21 parents. Then you had the coven leaders, and then each coven had one to two people that reported to its respective leader. Then you had a whole bunch of other groups, which are predominantly, you let's call them 36 to 39 different groups, each one hailing from a different location, and then after you get past all those groups, then you start hitting people. So then the people are down here where you have your dragon families, your Asian dynasties and, and whatnot here at the top of the people food chain. But the point I wanted to make is that there are several layers above always was before you get down to these people that call themselves the rulers of the world. They are far from the rulers of the world. They never ruled the other 36 to 39 groups that are here. Uh, they never even came close to having a direct conversation with the people at the top. Yeah. The only reason why those people ever reached out to me is because their goal was to control me. Um, yeah. I didn't know that at the time. I thought that they were working together with us. They said they had changed their ways and so on. But, you know, then I sat in meetings with them every Saturday for three years, and they used to laugh at the amount of lies that they could tell, and everybody just believes them. So, yeah, and then you get down to the families, and then several layers below the families, you start getting to the government. So the people that are saying, oh, let's fight the government, fight the government, fight the government, all those instructions came from so far away from the government, the government is just following along with the bouncing ball. The unfortunate part about what's happening now is the 39 groups are no longer cooperating with the dragon family. Then there's nobody left up here. I think there might be one coven left, uh, possibly two. Um, and in those people, you know, we don't, we don't, I don't talk to those people. And then there's no parents left. Nope. Um, and, and so you've got uh, sporadic stragglers up here at the top, but they were never the brains of the operation. The brains of the operation always was, I, I call them the, I've nicknamed them the uh, trio of death, just because of all the things that they did. But okay. that was, they were always the brains. So there's no brains behind the dragon families. Therefore, there's no brains behind the Pindar. Therefore, there's, there's fragmented information that they received over the years. 
and they're trying to execute on a fragmented plan that somebody else wrote, which is why they don't understand why none of their stuff is working anymore. So these people that are purporting themselves to be the leaders of the world, which governments are still listening to, have no sense of a plan whatsoever. So when we, we found a loophole, meaning myself and a few other people found a loophole, and it was actually one of the, the original tribe that signed the agreement and, and came to us and said, well, we don't agree with martial law anymore. We want a peace treaty. And then I started thinking about it. And I'm like, well, you know, a peace treaty, that's the loophole. So we went to the council, which is not – there are Draco involved, but there's hundreds of thousands of species involved. And, and we petitioned for a peace treaty here on Earth. Once that peace treaty was signed and agreed to and consented to by the council, then we are now under a peace treaty, which means that anybody violating the peace treaty is subject to the UPU or any other enforcement unit. Um, and that includes any of humanity that's not following along. So... That is the significance of global martial law, where we had one dictator for the entire planet, which is what put them in control, not the dragon families. They were always sub, 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 sub levels down. But that's how we we basically gave up planet Earth to a third party entity. Yeah, well, the, the dragon family is about seven, eight uh, other way down that page, if memory serves me correctly. That, that shows you the level. And the government, uh, the, the piece of paper is about five or six foot. The government is on the bottom line. It's about three quarters of an inch, which is the space of the of the piece of paper. In other words, they're the bottom of the list. You know, in terms of galactic terms, they're not even in this solar system. Uh and this is what people really have to understand. You know, you can blame Trump for this, that, and the other. It, 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 what he's trying to do, and what we're trying to do, is is give control control back to the government because the government did not have any control. Nobody alive in America today has ha- operated under a real American government. It's all been corporation. This is why we've, we've got our letters, uh, names, print your name out in capital letters. Well, if you go and look at tombstones, they're all printed out in capital letters. Why? Because it means you're dead, which is why they call it uh, the corporation, a fiction name. Because the corporation, if you want to set up uh, uh, Randy Morgan's corporation, they'll ask you for a fic- fictitious name. Because the corporation Randy Morgan's already exists, because that's when when they changed all the system. But you know, all the top ends gone, pretty much. This is what I talk about in our show about the inner war and the external war, and most people are waiting for the external war. Well, uh, the most important thing is the internal war. The most important thing is not getting money out or funding. There's far more important things, you know. Money in and of itself is a control system. What people fail to realize and what we need... Absolutely. What people need to grasp is those pieces of paper are exchanged for your life force energy. This is what they've been really harvested, your life force energy. And the idea of trading your life force energy, which is the most valuable thing on this planet, for pieces of paper and bits of metal, once you understand the concept of it, is absolutely absurd. Now, can money help? It can. But it can only help if we change the way we operate, not the way they operate, the way we operate. And we can't carry on just hoarding it and, and leaving people homeless on the street, walking past them. You can't carry on doing that. You can blame the government for that. But as Kim says, the government's not getting any money. It's all going to the Rothschild. These are the same people that all the RV crew people are waiting to give money. They've never given money to anybody. You know, and if they do with that uh, uh, 
flush with money. Why are they selling all their estates off? Why are they, why have they sold all the stocks off early on this year? Why have they just uh, done uh, an art sale in Sotheby's? Because they've got no money. All of it is now in the trust, and, and we need to get behind it and and uh, get the uh, the people in the government a chance to actually operate for and by the people. Because at the moment, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't make a blind bit of difference. They're only allowed to do so much. Randy. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, the final round on this, because this two hours has flown by like, uh, wow. Um, I told you we'd need eight hours. Yeah, yeah. And, and first off, <laughs> is there anything that we've left sitting on the table that either one of you want to want to want to put out at the current time, either updating the situation, updating the information? Because I don't want to leave that. I would like Kim to um, briefly touch on the military situation and the equipment. Because I think people need to know. People around the alt media are saying, when's the military going to do this and when's the military going to do that? Well, the, the, the military, and, and they will even tell you as much, are waiting for the global reset and to be paid on their dinar. And they are taking orders directly from the Chinese elders and a gentleman by the name of John Von Wright, which is the current general over the Nazi party. So is the military going to come to the aid of the United States anytime soon? You know, I sure hope so. But right now they are working on the economic assassination of the United States on behalf of the Chinese elders in exchange for special positions which they're being offered over in China should they do a good job. So is the military coming to the aid of the country? They No, they are completely... This is why Trump... Uh, passed that $700 billion military budget. He passed it in the hopes of buying the military from the order, or Rothschild, which is your Chinese elders, your dragon families, whatever you want to call them. Um, he was making an attempt to buy the military back. Um, it didn't work. You know, the military is still reporting to somebody else in a foreign country, and I wish that wasn't the case. Uh, but they are still exercising the globalist agenda. And, you know, if I had anything to say to them while I'm sitting here on the phone, you know, re remember, you took an oath to these people, to yeah. the 380 million people in this country, to protect and serve these people and to serve at the pleasure of the president. The president is Trump. Like him or hate him, he is the president of the United States. And, and, and that's who they're supposed to report to, the commander-in-chief. Um, not to these people in China who can't even properly report to themselves. Um, if we are presented with a complete macro and microeconomic plan of how the global reset is going to occur and how it is possible to have a revaluation of currency, we would be happy to review that plan, and if there's any merit to it, then we will execute on that plan, and I agree. I will do that if it is being presented in a way to us that makes macro and microeconomic sense. So if you need to go to your superiors over there in China or anywhere else and ask them for a copy of this plan, we would love to review it, and then you don't need to hack our system anymore. We'd be happy to give you the funds for the program if it is for the benefit of the people. Otherwise, you know, I have nothing else to say. Yeah, um, and it's important to note this is not China, the government, because they've been, uh, they're being loose. Or China, well. the people. No, no. No. Nope. You know, it's nothing to do with the country. Uh, countries are irrelevant. The, you know, imaginary lines on a piece of paper, as Shane uh, said once. And that's exactly, they just use countries for their own, their own benefit. America is being used as the military bully around the world now, like Britain was used prior, uh, previously, and Israel is being used, and their people 
as a religious program uh, designed to disrupt the whole of the Middle East. And China's the latest one, so everyone hates on China, like everyone hates on Russia for the last 50 years. But, you know, when the country's not even communist, it, it wasn't created, communism wasn't created by Russian people, it was created by the Kazarians, the same as China. Uh, and so we have to get away from blaming this country and that country and start working together because... Yeah. These people are not interested in countries, they're not interested in people, and we have to remove them quietly, non-violent. You know, all, all the advancements we've done with the trust, we shut this people down, that people down, this people down, this server down, you name it. Not one has been done by violence. You don't have to be violent. Well, we have as a... a body organism as human beings on this world been plotted against and pitted against each other. We have been effectively our own greatest enemy. And it's not lost on me that as we're sitting here on 11-11, on the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, which was not the war that ends all wars at all. It was actually the beginning of all the next uh, wars that would follow it, including World War II, which opened up the deep state and got us to where we are today, that, that we need to stop finger-pointing and attacking each other as much as possible and begin to work together as, as an organism. Each one of you out there is sovereign in the sense that you are breathed of spirit and breathed of source and we need to recognize that within ourselves first and within each other living being and begin to operate going forward. And, and, and I don't think anybody on this call today disagrees with that. No, no, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about coming together. You know, it's not uh, we have to go away from us and them. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's all about us. No one's coming to save you. Kim's not coming to save you. I'm not coming to save you. Randy's not. Neil Keenan, Anna Von Wright, heaven forbid. We save each other. The ETs are not coming down to save us. Why would they? Yeah. But you, you know, you can blame the cabal all you like, and the cabal have, have played a, a role, but we have also got to recognise our own issues because we've gone along with a lot of it. We're, we're, you yep. know, we're collect, collecting wealth and, and uh, ignoring our friends, family and neighbours. Let's not stop competing with our friends, family and neighbours and let's all work together. And I mean all. Healing the trauma of the collective conscience and the shadow work. That's really where it's all at, folks. And um, you can hear that exhorted to you in numerous ways on uh, Thomas's show. Thomas, tell people where they can reach you. Um, well, we go live every Thursday at 7.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. And the, uh, the link is Spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash 895-5881. And you can also listen live on the website thinkdifferent.thepeoplesclub.org Thank you both for coming on today. Thanks for um, fielding some questions, uh, listening to me uh, vent myself a little bit. And Kim, thank you for coming on and answering questions that uh, I, I believe people wanted to hear greatly articulated. Well, I thank appreciate you. your time and I appreciate everybody who's listening um, on a Sunday on eleven eleven. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for joining us. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you, and uh, we'll uncover it all together. Yes. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.